Welcome to the Have It All Marriage for the Have It All Life podcast, where your marriage has a 100% chance of success if you do it God's way. And that's really what we're here to talk about today, brothers, is how to do it God's way. And inside of that space, what God has laid on my heart for you today is to lay out the exact formula and prescription that we teach men inside of our high ticket coaching program. This high ticket coaching program is for successful professionals professional, high achieving men, most often business owners, doctors, lawyers, airline pilots, successful programmers. These are guys who are no stranger to business success. However, for whatever reason, they just can't figure out this whole thing that we call marriage. And what they've also figured out is that the inability to figure out the marriage is really destroying everything else inside their life. And when you look at this as a man and you look in the mirror and you ask yourself a question, I'm going to ask you to ask yourself a question, brother. Is this what you signed up for? Is the amount of love and connection and closeness and tenderness and smiling and laughing and tickling and teasing? Is the sexual relationship between you and your wife? Is this what you signed up for? Is what's your role modeling to your children, what you signed up for? Is how all of this is impacting and affecting your body and your ability to stay healthy and eat correctly and lift weights and exercise and your spirituality and your relationship with God and your relationship with your children and and their emotional health. And then finally, of course, yes, in the one area where you have been able to succeed far beyond most men inside of the conversation of business is this failing marriage now dragging that business down and putting it at risk. And if if any of those questions and more likely most, if not all of those questions have the answer of yes, that because of the state of your marriage currently, all of these other things that we care about in life are at risk. Well, then where you find yourself, my brother, is in the painful pit of problems. And that's what's in the lower left-hand corner of this diagram. And this painful pit of problems has another, another attribute. It has another characteristic. And what that is, is that you are incarcerated in a prison of a man who cannot seem to transcend this. Now, if you're listening to this on a podcast, I want you to imagine in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you've got a little stick figure and he's got a box around him. And in the top right-hand corner of your screen, you have got a larger stick figure. And for right now, there's no box, although we're going to talk about that later. And between this, this pit, this little stick figure, this man who does not have the power and does not have the capacity and does not have the ability to produce inside his marriage in a way that it fuels the happiness and success of that marriage, which then becomes the foundation for the body he wants, the spiritual life that he wants, the relationship with his wife and his kids that he wants, and the relationship with his business and finances that he wants, that man is firmly inside this painful pit of problems. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to actually imagine in this bigger version of yourself, that version of the man you see in the mirror, let's call him you 2.0, versus the man in the pit is you 1.0. You 2.0 has the power, has the capacity, has the training, has the skills, has the mindset, has the heart, has everything that he needs to be able to bring this marriage to a place, to lead this marriage to a place where his wife is happy, where his wife is joyful, where his wife is blissful and inside of that space the laughing and the dancing and the tickling and the teasing and the cuddling and the straddling and what's going on behind closed doors and what's going on out in the living room with your kids and what's going on in the boardroom and what's going on in the gym and what's going on in the church and what's going on in all areas of your life and your bank account that all of these things are getting better because the marriage is not tearing it down If you remember, the name of the podcast is the Have It All Marriage for the Have It All Life. Look, man, 
any man listening to this understands that if your marriage is not working, none of the rest matters and more likely, more than likely, it's all going down the tubes. So this bigger version of yourself, the man who has the capacity to create and maintain that kind of marriage and therefore that kind of life, we call that the peak of pleasurable possibilities. This peak of pleasurable possibilities, you 2.0, that is the man who you desire to become. That is the man you must hunt down. That is the man you must ascend. And ascend is the key word, because here's what I'm going to tell you. Part of that prison in the painful pit of problems, that box around that little stick figure, is the stories you're telling yourself. It's what you're settling for. It's this idea that as a man, if I am in my warrior self and I acknowledge the pain of how unhappy I am inside of this marriage, and I actually tell my wife that and confess it to her, that there is a better than equal chance, actually there is a three to one chance, that what's going to happen is my wife is going to leave me because she's already got one foot out the door. And if I'm being honest with myself, the truth of the matter is, I've got one foot outside the door too, but I don't want that to happen. I don't want it to happen because I don't want to mess my kids up. If you've done the research, man, you know there's a hundred times more likely they're going to be all kinds of abused, including sexual, three to five times more likely to be suicidal, 66% of all teen suicides in fatherless homes, your wife living in near poverty, your kids growing up with that and having her boyfriends in and out of the house. Man, we don't want that. By the way, we have busted our behind to build a successful business and a successful career. And we finally have some money and we have some comfort and we have some security. We get divorced. That's all going down the tubes. The loss of the, the little time because it's going so fast that we have left with our kids. So it's like I could go on for hours, man, but there's so many things that as men that are more important to us than whether or not we're miserable. So what we do is we push down that misery as we have been taught since we were four years old. We push it down and it eats away at us from the inside. Okay, so here you are. And, 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 and the thing is, is like this warrior mentality, this warrior mentality that said, I will hunt down the career success that I need. I will hunt down the business that I need. I will hunt down the man I need to become in order to succeed in business. That guy becomes a wanderer inside his marriage. Because if that warrior mentality is unleashed, there are only three possible outcomes. Outcome number one, you walk away from your wife. And I know, man, that, that that rips your heart out of your chest. And as a Christian, how do you do that? You know God hates divorce. You know it's going to destroy your children. So you push down like you've been taught since you were four years old, your feelings, and you martyr yourself, and you go through life miserable. Option number two you you fix it right but the thing is is you can't fix it because you've been trying to fix it and you don't know how to fix it and in between those two options there's really there's there's the third one there's you walk away there's that you martyr yourself or that you fix it i mean that's it and so what ends up happening is this warrior gets stalled this warrior becomes a wanderer i hope it gets better I hope at some point my wife gets over it. I hope maybe God heals her. Oh, Lord, please change my wife's heart. Lord, please help me in my marriage. Lord, please heal my marriage. But what you don't understand, man, God told you very clearly that if you don't treat your wife in an understanding way and are not harsh with her, that your prayers are going to be hindered. He's not just going to fix your marriage for you. You have to do this, man. That's why he put you on this planet to lead your wife to Jesus, to lead your wife to her sanctification, not to just pray that he will do it for you. And so now what this does, this, this problem of this painful pit, what it does is it opens up problem number one. So if you look in the diagram, I'm going to point to it right here. 
is problem number one. If you look at problem number one, what is problem number one? Problem number one is what is going on in the inside of you. What is going on in the inside of you is anger and disappointment and rage and frustration that your wife is not who you expected her to be, that your marriage is not what you expected it to be, that she's constantly unhappy, that you don't seem to be able to do anything right, that, that you, should, you do 10 things, you did nine of them wrong, you managed to go buy the five love languages and read that book and you found out that hers is acts of service and you do the dishes for her and she tells you you did it wrong or that you need to go sit down because she doesn't actually want you to do it after telling you for years that the big problem was that you didn't do it. What you got to understand, man, is that the emotions that are inside your body that you are disconnected from as a man still have impact on the outside of your body. These emotions are contagious. These emotions of feeling bad make your wife feel bad. And you've already lost, man. Before you open your mouth, before you say or do anything, she gets to this certain point where the energy you push into the room is so negative so consistently that her body develops a habitual hormonal response of cortisol and catecholamines. And inside of that space, it's she's in fight or flight. It shuts down the genes that go hunt down and cure cancer. It shuts down the genes that go hunt down and cure heart disease. She's literally getting sicker from the inside out. And it's not just your unhappiness with her. It's this, oftentimes we as entrepreneurs, we always have a vision for where we want to take our business and we're frustrated and impatient with where it is today, even if that's great compared to where it needs to be inside of that vision. And that energy stresses her. So what you've got to understand is that there are hundreds of things that are going on inside you. And here's the big problem is you don't have visibility to them. It's all a jumbled mess. If you think of a fish tank full of dirty water, it's just a jumbled mess. And so what you've got to do is you've got to figure out how, well, how, let's put it like this. In every interaction with you, does your wife feel better or worse? Because after the interaction, if she feels worse, she's going to want fewer and fewer interactions and she's going to want them to last shorter and shorter. If she feels better, she's going to want longer interactions and she's going to want them to last longer and longer. And I'm going to tell you, man, 59 60ths of that interaction is how you show up and the energy you push into the room. And scientifically, I don't have time to go into it all, but she's picking up on it through the smell of your sweat, through the heartbeat, the electromagnetic energy, through the reflector neurons in her brain through your facial expressions, your tone of voice, your body language, she just knows. So what you've got to do is you've got to ascend your inner king. Ascend your inner king. And what that means is that we need to fix this. As we fix this, what ends up happening is when you come into the room, she feels better before you even open your mouth or say or do anything and you've already won and now the interaction is yours to lose versus today's reality when you come into the room she feels worse before you open your mouth or say or do anything and you've already lost and all you do is dig your hole deeper so let's talk about that what does it look like when you solve problem number one well, when you solve problem number one you open up Problem number two. Opening up problem number two means the outer man. These are the things that you say and that you do. Now, here's the problem. Nobody teaches us as men what to say or do. How are we supposed to know? How are we supposed to know? She's not going to tell us because it's how she tests. Do we love her or do we not? And so oftentimes we get it wrong. And so now picture this, this is her reality. This is her experience of being your wife. 
you show up in the room with this negative energy and you've already lost, and then you just throw gasoline on that fire by saying and doing the wrong things. And you're like, oh, Bob, no, 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 Bob, no. You don't, you don't understand. From the outside in, we're a storybook family. I go to work hard. I make good money. I bring it home. I share it with her. I'm not beating on her. The most, most of the guys who come in this program, they're not cheating on her. They, they say they're not looking at porn. Come on, man. She just hasn't caught him or you looking at porn. But he's not cheating on her, at least outwardly, with a human female. He's not, he's not beating the kids. He's trying to be a good father. He's trying to be a good dad. He's home every night he can be. He's not out in the bars. If he has to travel for business, he's calling her every night. He's remembering her birthdays. He's remembering her anniversaries. He's trying to do nice things for her. He's trying to act in loving ways to her. And yet he's failing miserably. But what he doesn't understand is that 80% of what every woman wants is identical. And what I just described is the bottom 10% of it that bottom 10% of the, of the 80%. And that top 80% is not intuitive to a man. That top 80% is about her heart connection and tender moments and romantic moments and being made to feel uh, seen and heard and held and cherished and nurtured and, and, and nourished and protected and cared for and loved. And this is stuff that does not come naturally to us because as men, we don't think we need it. I got news for you, brother, when you finally understand what it is and, and you're able to receive it from her and she's given it to you willingly, it's as good as sex and it makes sex better. But as, as an uneducated man in this area, as a man who doesn't understand this, you got no clue. It's kind of like if, if I told you that we're going to have steak for dinner tonight and you never had it before. And you're like, well, it doesn't mean anything to me. Don't care about it. Don't need it. Let's, let's have chicken. And then all of a sudden you have steak and you're like, oh, now I see what I was missing. Here's the problem, though. She won't tell you. And the reason she won't tell you is it's how she tests whether you love her or not. Because when she was four years old, people told her that you only wanted one thing. And you would do anything or say anything or try to manipulate her in order to get it. So she better be really sure that she is loved before she gets used. Now, when she was infatuated with you, her brain was kind of tricking her into the idea that you were giving her these things. And let's face it, you were putting your best foot forward. And inside of that space, you were probably doing some of these good things. And, and, and you know, we've all heard of some of them. Bring her flowers or write her a note, make a deposit into her emotional bank account. I mean, it takes us a week and a half to teach you all these things. And most men just know two or three of them. But here's the thing, when the infatuation and the hormones wear off, and she finds out that you're only doing 10% of the 80%, that's not even the price of admission. It does nothing to make her feel loved. So warrior king ascension number one is ascend your inner king. Warrior king ascension number two is, is ascend your outer king. Inside of that space, you learn the 80% that is common to every woman. Now when you put these two things together, what happens is your ascended inner king is delivering elite level husband behaviors from an ascended outer king. And when these two things combine, in addition to dopamine as a result of every interaction, she's also going to get a hit of vasopressin, oxytocin, serotonin, testosterone, and estrogen. This makes a powerful cocktail inside of her body that says, I am love, I want love, I give love, I receive love, I'm bonded to this man, I'm attached to this man, I'm attracted to this man, and in fact, she is deeply and powerfully sexually aroused to you. And inside of that space, her body now becomes your greatest weapon against Satan's war in your marriage or against your marriage because her body literally compels her to try to work through the issues. So we've ascended our inner man and we've ascended our outer man. That opens the door to number three. And this is where a lot of guys want to start, or maybe they started too. They've got no clue about one. So they just try to do nicer things for her. And that makes him look manipulative, self-serving, or weak and pathetic, both of which are very unattractive. And then when that causes problems, then he tries to resolve the issues. But he has no skills to resolve the issues. He has, he has, he has no idea how to even understand what she wants, let alone to actually make the transformational change. And inside of that space, what ends up happening? 
he fails. He teaches her that the monster makes it unsafe for her to try to resolve these issues. He makes it very clear to her that the mama's boy makes it unproductive to try to solve these issues because he's either blaming, shaming, defending, deflecting, and getting angry and turning it around on her like a monster, or he's curling up in the fetal position saying, I'm sorry, mommy, I'll do better, but everybody knows it's a lie because nothing's going to change. But see, when you've ascended your inner man, you've ascended your outer man, now she's compelled to re-engage in those conversations because she believes they're going to be productive because the ascended inner king and the ascended outer king has now taught her that it is most likely going to be safe and productive to share the concerns of her heart. And in that space, in this number three, I call it ascend your queen. In the ascend your queen function, what ends up happening is that you get her back on her throne feeling like a wife, feeling like a queen, having all these issues resolved once and for all, never to come back up unless you start backsliding and cause her to revisit them. And when that wall, 90% of which you've never heard, and this is the thing that blows most men's mind, is they find out all the reasons she was leaving him and it was nothing she had ever said because she couldn't trust him. When that wall is halfway down, he's at a clean slate with her, and the other half of that wall, interestingly, is the top 20% of her needs. These are her deepest needs that she has not trusted you enough to share with you. When she trusts you enough to share that with you, she gives you the keys to the kingdom and the roadmap, connect the dots, paint by number, step by step, how to get to her heart and love her. At that point, all the testing is over. At that point, she becomes happy. At that point, she becomes a laughing, dancing, tickling, teasing, pleasing, cuddling girl, straddling your lap, kissing you with lips that are soft and warm, interlacing her fingers with yours, looking at you with eyes of respect and desire and appreciation. And let me tell you something, man. That woman has been a first gear behind closed doors because you were not man enough to take her to a place where she was completely safe, emotionally speaking, and she could only go so far physically. And inside of the space where she feels completely safe emotionally, hold on to your hat, man, because all your high school fantasies are about to come true with the love of your life, with the mother of your children, with the person who owns half of all of your wealth in a way where things are getting better every day. But are they going to get better every day? See, here's the big danger. When you get to this point, interestingly, at this point, usually they say, how can I be a better wife? What can I do for you? And when you hear that, it's, she's, she's biblically submitting to you, but it's not a license to order her around. It's actually, she's honoring you by saying, I accept that you have become more like Jesus. Your love feels more like his agape love. And I want to do that too. And you're clearly ahead of me on this journey on this path, I would like to follow you. And see, when that happens, she has to let down all of her hard armor. When she lets down all of her hard armor, the slightest misstep could be soul crushing to her. There's no opportunity to backslide because if you do, you'll put her in a fetal position in her bed, sobbing and probably thinking about suicide. So here's what you need to do. You need to do number four is you need to ascend your kingdom. Ascend your kingdom. What does that mean? That means across all areas of health, wealth, relationship, and spirituality, which we alliterate body, being, balance, and business, that you are making daily deposits into all of those areas, which is really the have it all life. We talk about the have it all marriage for the have it all life. Well, in steps one, two, and three, you build the have it all marriage. And in step four, you build the have it all life. And that means that you're getting better in your body every day. You're getting better in your spiritual walk every day. You're getting better with your wife every day. You're getting better with your kids every day. You're getting better with business and finance every day. And so now look, what do we have? What we have is it, when, when you were in that painful pit of problems and, and incarcerated in a prison of your own thoughts, stories, beliefs, and excuses and weakness, then your wife felt like when you came into an interaction with her, she made she felt bad and you had already lost. Then you opened your mouth and you made it worse. Here's a crazy thing. 
the, the things you say and do that were wrong made it worse. The things that you say and do that are right when you're in the pit make it worse because even those things look manipulative and self-serving. You're only doing it to get sex or you're only doing it so you don't get a divorce. It's not because she feels loved. And then if she does try to talk to you about it, you just shoot yourself in the foot because you don't understand and you can't actually change. And for her, every day is the same. It's, it's the same or worse. She looks at what is her life going to look like a month from now, and it's probably the same or maybe worse than it is today. Versus if you turn this around and you do this journey and you transcend the pit to the peak and you get to that peak, then what happens at the peak is she's got a guy who lights her up just by his presence in the room and gives her butterflies and makes her feel good and get a hit of dopamine. When he says and opens his mouth and says and does things, guess what? 90 something percent of it is right. And you're still going to be human. You're still going to make mistakes. So sometimes you do say and do wrong things. But when you do, you have the elite level ninja warrior class husband skills to be listening to your marriage like a tuning fork. And at the minute it starts to go out of tune, you recognize it and you get it right back in tune with your elite level warrior class husband conflict resolution skills to be able to resolve marital conflict with your elite level warrior class husband monitoring skills of the emotional health and energy of the marriage and that of your wife where you become the guardian of her soul you become the protector of her spirit you become the guy who is who she trusts with her heart soul and mind to be taken care of in that space, to be led to a healthier place in that space, to feel better in that space. So when something goes wrong, you, you notice it and you fix it right away. But not only that, you're up leveling body being balanced and business every day for the rest of your life. That means being married to you is an experience and that experience gets better every day. You're literally up leveling her experience of what it means to be married to you every day. And by the way, the guy in the pit doesn't even know what she needs because she's never shared her top needs with him. The guy in the peak, he knows exactly what she needs and he has the self-discipline and the unbreakable emotional frame to deliver those things to her with joy and bliss in a way where she's never felt so loved. That guy is divorce proof. That guy is affair proof that guy stays married forever and inside of that space he teaches that to his children and he teaches it to his wife and she starts doing it for him so that in every interaction with you you feel with your wife you feel better you get a little lift you feel more in love you feel more loved and then all of a sudden you start to wake up and you understand what does it mean to feel heard and seen and held and cherished and to have these tender and romantic moments. And it becomes the sweetest juice that you could ever drink from the fruit of your marriage. And you combine that with what is going on now with this completely trusting ability to be vulnerable behind closed doors. And that becomes the fuel and the fire to build the life and the kingdom that God created you to build. And inside of that space, you can execute on the great commandment and the great commission while you have the have it all life and you maintain the have it all life. And someday you get to heaven and you hear, well done, good and faithful servant. And then here's the last thing that I want to tell you. This guy, he's already inside you. We just need to break him out of the prison that he's in. And what you're going to find is that when you do and you get to that peak, you understand that that peak becomes the next prison to be transcended. And we take this whole thing and we move it down here and we start over again. And when we do that every year for the rest of your life, let me tell you something, man, there is not dynamite that could get your wife out of this marriage. So that's all I got for you today, brothers. If, if you want to have a conversation about how this works and what our high ticket coaching program looks like, then what I want you to do is go to www.realmanrevolution.com. 
www.realmanrevolution.com. Book a call with either me or one of my enrollment coaches, and we'll see if you're a fit. And if you are, we will do everything necessary for you to be able to start your experience on the day of that phone call. Until then, man, love and light. This is Bob Gerace, and I'll see you on the other side.